Cecil Field, the former Naval Air Station, has now qualified to become the eighth in a limited series of spaceports, now qualified to undertake some of the commercial and private space launches that are envisioned for an industry that, well, hopes to grow by leaps and bounds. Cecil is now currently certified for horizontal launch capabilities. They've been through the process for a number of years. There are a number of companies looking at them. Right now, the majority of the activity, of course, is located in Mojave, California, or in some cases, the facility that's being built for Virgin Galactic out in New Mexico. But Florida, with a rich history of space flight, of course, it's where Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and the shuttles were launched, where, where Skylab got its start, and so forth. It's got a lot going for it. And according to the governor, this is a state that wants the business and is willing to work hard to get it. This is a big deal. <laughs> you know, nobody else around here has this opportunity. And because of the great teamwork that was put together to make this happen, it's coming to Florida. And, you know, especially as I said earlier, in this economy, to have that kind of uh, chance, that kind of economic stimulation, if you will, uh, in a very unique kind of way, and it's coming to Florida. The governor, of course, was uh, working a short schedule, but he indicated a strong willingness to make sure that business that has gone west and would normally have been associated with the space community already present in Florida find a way to come back. Do you have any inkling or, or are they giving you any direction from Tallahassee as to how aggressive they're willing to be in regards to whatever incentives might be available to lure some of that business back over here? We have just started communications with the FDOT and the state and uh, in developing the funding mechanisms and the, and the marketing mechanisms that are necessary to uh, fulfill this part of the industry. Cecil, of course, has quite a history as a major naval jet base. It's, it's done a tremendous amount of work in flight tests and development and so forth. Uh, how pivotal do you find that history and that capability in the past being uh, in attracting customers to Cecil? I think it's a very nice parallel. Uh, the development here at Cecil Field with, with naval aviation is, is documented uh, greatly in, in the way the naval aviation evolved. And as a result of that, I think that'll be very key in attracting clientele here, aerospace clientele. Well, obviously, the infrastructure built around here is capable of handling, you know, just huge loads, huge aircraft, and a lot of high-speed aircraft. What kind of changes might need to be made to be able to host horizontal launch? The one thing we see in particular with the, with infrastructure in place, we see the need for additional assembly facilities, as well as uh, oxidizer fuel storage facilities and uh, rocket propellant storage facilities. That's the that's in our mind is the primary objective and the next steps as far as development goes. What kind of customers are you looking to attract now? Are you looking more for R&D? Are you looking to become a part of the space tourism industry? Or are all comers welcome? All comers are welcome. But primarily right now we're looking at the R&D and the space tourism. Also we're looking at the availability of launching orbital payloads from suborbital uh, elevations. Another piece of this also is the, the high speed delivery of small packages. Those are the primary areas we're looking at. Uh, one such group who we're working with has already established an agreement with a, a local resort uh, where the people will, will stay. So it's, it's, uh, we're, we're getting past, uh, getting past the, the go button. Well, I, I realize you probably can't talk too much about agreements uh, in, uh, under negotiation at the moment, but how seriously is the private space community taking Cecil? You know, that, that's a great question. The, uh, there's two organizations in particular that are looking at us very seriously and uh, been here to visit, have toured the facilities, have definitely decided this is probably be the location where they want to locate once they get on their feet financially. Well, there's a lot to recommend the area from a standpoint of industry, infrastructure, experience, personnel in the aerospace community. And then, of course, <laughs> it's nice not being in the middle of nowhere. That's very true. And, uh, you know, I've got to hand it to Steve Landino in New Mexico. He's done a great job with what, what he's been given. And uh, I just look for us to be a complement to the existing facilities that are out there. And, and totally unfair question. Any best guesses on when we might expect Cecil to go active? I'm looking for our first launch to occur possibly the end of, end of 2011, possibly early 2012. I think a lot of that hinges on what happens with Richard Branson and Virgin Galactic out in New Mexico and how that facility is developed and what his, uh, what his timeline is for going ahead and developing his aircraft. Aero TV is brought to you by 
If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low-time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value.